Hey, what's up everyone? After a long drag of Street Fighter V, the game has finally gotten a free upgrade which is Street Fighter V Arcade Edition. I already went over the launch, but just like every year, I do a complete review for the third run of Street Fighter V Arcade Edition. This will include the new additions to the roster, Esther Mo additions, stages, and my thoughts for the Street Fighter V Arcade Editions overall. The first thing I want to go over is the new characters that was revealed back in December 2017. We got Sakura, Blanca, Falk, G, Cody, and Sagat. This is great because we didn't have to play the guessing game of who's the next character. Uh -oh. Pleased to meet you. The launch character was Sakura, one of my favorite characters. For the most part, she plays like the Sakura we all know. As far as her story goes, her story starts off with, wait, what? what? It just started with a fight without any warning. What the heck, Catcon? Anyways, Sakura and Karen are sparring. After the fight, she's been thinking about many things like life goals, growing old, becoming strong, happiness, even working jobs. I also love Sakura's reaction when Karen mentions Ryu in the conversation. She mentions she encountered Ryu in the events of a Shadow Falls story mode. Sakura has been working at an arcade part-time and doing school to become a teacher. She's growing up. She's no longer this carefree teen we used to love back in the Alpha games. After finishing her shift at her job, she wonders about street fighting, getting married, and hey, look who she just bumped into. Ryu-san! What are you doing here? Yeah, Karen summoned Ryu for some emergency. What a great friend. <laughs> Ryu and Sakura sparred a bit. If you're troubled, instead of talking, perhaps this might be better. Uh, yes! After the fight, Ryu compliments her skills and then Sakura drops the real question for him. But I meant having children to create new bonds in our lives. Uh, I see. I've never thought of it. But that is another type of strength. Yeah, I feel that's one kind of strength. A bond which can connect me to my future. Thank you, now I understand what I was looking for. And I realize this is what I wanted. I'm glad to have helped. The strength of life. Oh my, I love it. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not trying to have a kid right now. I'm just seeking my path of strength. I mean, oh, what am I even talking about? In February, Blanca was released and gained some mixed to positive reception. The biggest gimmick for Blanca is the Blanca Charm plushies. It's even in the story mode. Blanca is seen selling his plushies in the streets of Brazil. He bumps into Lara. She even steps on one of the plushies which pisses off Blanca. Lara and Blanca duke it out. After the fight, Lara apologizes for stepping on his merchandise. Blanca explains that he's overstocked with the plushies and he's trying to get rid of them to become popular. Sean, Lara's brother suggested bringing them to Japan since Japan is big on video games and anime. And Laura summarized it just right. Oh, I see. The Japanese like weird things. Blanca aims to Japan. Japan! In Japan, he tries to sell the plushies, but the results are the same. Blanca takes his frustration on the crane game machine filled with plushies since it's popular. However, he accidentally breaks the glass. He runs away. However, this is the same arcade that Sakura works at. Sakura chases and confronts him. They take it out in the streets. After they fight, Sakura realizes it's Blanca and tells him not to go around breaking the machine. Sakura offers to put the Blanca plushies in the crane game machine. Begin. In late April, Falk was released. She is known as the Guardian Hawk. 
Falk and Ed have a sibling-like bond and vow to help anyone like them who have suffered at the hands of Shadaloo. There's a mixed bag with this character, but I like her, she's pretty cool. When it was hinted she was about to be released, there was some information about her. Test Subject Findings The Test Subject has proven to be a suitable clone. She has undergone significant training and grows stronger by the day. She has also harnessed the ability to use the Psycho Power, but unlike the other Test Subjects, she utilizes it in a much different way. We're continuing to experiment with the extent to which her Psycho Power has manifested. But as this is uncharted territory, we need more time. We suspect the entirety of Shadaloo will be pleased with her progress as we are. Tomorrow, we will introduce her new ways to apply her Psycho Power. Results to follow. The following day, there was more information revealed. The test subject findings, Kugo, Conanon, Feder, Sturm, these are among the words we're associating with her psycho power. Her abilities aside, the test subject has been expressing a curious case of emotional anguish. Her yearning for freedom has drastically increased and may be affecting performance as a suitable clone. We will continue to look for ways to suppress any emotional attachment she has to anything other than psycho power. And her weapon of choice, please stand by. I actually like the Estramal Capcom win to appreciate this character. As far as our story goes, we see a young Falk having nightmares in the facility. She constantly has these nightmares about Bison torturing her as she grows older. Every day she fights Bison. One day she was able to confront that nightmare. She reveals she has psycho powers. Ed breaks her out of the facility. Ed and Falk both share a link since they both have psycho powers. Many days has passed and Ed and Falk spar to understand their psycho powers. Your movement is most inefficient. Ed. Who taught you to fight? Ed compliments that she's very strong, but Falk thanks him for saving her. They both have a goal to become strong and save others like them, which most likely foreshadows the Neo Shadowloo group in Ed's story in Season 2. Desk work just isn't my thing, you know? Looks like I can have a little fun now. Next up is Cody. Now, Cody gets an interesting promo. We first get a letter from Hagar in late May. City of Metro City, May 26, 2018. Dear Mayor Cody, before I start, just know I'm only sending this because I was required to. Something about the old mayor welcoming the new one. So don't think I'm over past differences. When I first met you, I was unsure if you could abandon your ways, and I was right. You got yourself in prison more times than I cared to keep track of. However, let me remind you that Metro City needs someone they could believe in. Someone that will carry on my duties. And someone with a proven track record of bringing justice to the street. That someone happens to be you. Remember to not close yourself off from the cause of the city. Instead, alter the chaotic winds and surrounding your previous life and reach out to bring peace to the city we call home. Take this opportunity to keep the trust you earned when we took down the Magir gang. Of course, I was never one to shy away from going hard on those who would never resort to physical violence. But I only use my fist when necessary. I understand you have a tendency to go a few steps further than your fist, but only use these tools when the situation demands it. Knowing you, this change may prove difficult at first, but I believe in you. If I didn't, I wouldn't have gotten you out of that rut of yours. Don't disappoint me. Don't disappoint Metro City. Sincerely, Mike Hager. So in late June, Cody is available. As far as his story goes, it starts off with a new mysterious character by the name of Marlo accepting calls and adjusting Cody's appointments. That's right, Cody is the mayor of Metro City and he's very serious. Mayor, you are someone who is responsible for 120,000 citizens' lives here in Metro City. So you should take this a little more seriously. I am very serious. I'm even wearing a necktie. Cody hops out of the car and notices a huge truck. And guess who it is? It's Abigail. According to Cody, he tells Abigail that he was parking illegally. Oh, damn it! Why are you harassing me for no reason, you bastard? You parked illegally. And because... I don't like your face, Abigail. 
Cody later reflects on himself and then thinks about the future of Metro City. And then Zeku appears. Zeku proposes a business ordeal to the mayor. He wants to be in the shadows to make sure Metro City is safe. It's not so simple these days to manage a city of this size. I can help support you from the shadows. Cody declines the offer and then is confronted by Marlo. Overall, I like Cody's evolution in his character. His personality is pretty much the same, but the stages in his character development has been everywhere. From a regular civilian, to being in jail, and now a politician. Cody's character is something I really enjoy. His playstyle is quite fun. Cody is definitely a good character in the new season of Street Fighter V. Alright, it's August. It's EVO 2018. Lots of fans are spectating G to be revealed. There was so much mystery about G, especially since he's a brand new character. The theories I used to hear was crazy. I used to hear that G is really Q from Street Fighter 3. I heard G is Greg the Gorilla from Brilliant Roar. And he might be the gorilla that we see in Ed's story in Season 2. And to add more mystery, at EVO, there was puzzle statements to promote G. To the people of Earth who yearn of unifications, only you have discovered the knowledge I share, bestow upon you, presented with the knowledge. You will now understand my purpose. One voice plus the seven continents to carry mankind. All that divides us. I will smash over and under to burst. The impact of my dream will change us with the power of Earth. Every charge you build will strengthen my voice. Victory will be achieved once we become Pagan once again. One world where I will be your president. So looking at this added more questions to our answers about G. In the Street Fighter Anniversary Collection Collector's Edition in Japan, there's a set of tarot cards. Each character is represented by a theme. G is represented as a fool. There's theories that he's a president and with this puzzle promo going at EVO, I don't know. I get Illuminati vibes. Well, fast forward to the main event, we got G on stage and he gets the people's attention as he claims to be the president of the world. His trailer was revealed and I gotta say his gameplay was very impressive. However, after G was revealed, Capcom had more to show. One more new trailer. To be taken out! So God was revealed. That's right, we got two reveals and oh my gosh, the king is back. Sagat plays very ruthless. Catcon announced that both G and Sagat will be released the day after EVO was over. That was very exciting news to everyone who's been playing Street Fighter V. Now with that being said, let's talk about G's story. I'll fight this battle. Why? Because it is my duty. His story starts with a video of him claiming to be the president of the world. Rashid sees the video. He notices that he's a fighter and accepts new challengers. Rashid decides to perform a publicity stunt to fight him and boost his views on his videos. Rashid meets up with G and they fight. Oh, I'm grateful to meet a fellow citizen of the earth. Let's talk to our heart's content. Hi, Mr. President. Is the camera running? After the fight, they shake hands and Rashid looks like he's in pain. He watches the video and notices the views are going up. The world later spectates and has questions about G. Manat also wonders about G and why he's a mystery. Rose supervises her from the shadows. She pulls his car and it claims he's a fool. Manat decides to meet G and wants to confirm his destiny. So, greetings from one life on this planet to another. Welcome, my child of the Earth. This is an errand for my master. Please allow me to test your skill. Manat then later confirms that the fool is not G. It was destiny that Manat is confirmed to be the fool, not G. She was made a fool and to make it worse, the fight went viral. G's fight are now becoming popular and viral. I'll go over my thoughts about G's story later. Your words are not needed. Sagat's story starts off with him climbing to the top of their bodies. I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be a metaphor or a dream. Sagat then wonders as his pet tiger alerts him on his next opponent, himself. Do you think you are worthy enough to call yourself king? Don't be so arrogant. Sagat then reflects on the fight. 
Something then triggers Sagat as he was petting his tiger. Holy crap, it's the Satsuhado. His apprentice brings him his meal. At the same time, he has a hunger for murder. Kill them. Kill them. It even got to a point where Sagat is hallucinating that his apprentice is a demon. Sagat struggles with himself to focus. He managed to maintain himself. He now understands the power that Ryu has endured over the years. Sagat seeks out to find Ryu. He will continue to rise to the top. And that's it for the Season 3 characters story-wise. Let's talk about the Estras. In January, our first Estras will start with Beautiful Joe. You'll find him in the City of Chaos. Fight him each week for a gem. You need 4 gems to unlock the Beautiful Joe Estra battle costume for Rashid. In mid-February 2018, the next Esther battle is June. You fight Chun-Li in this costume in the Skies of Honor stage. I'm not a big Chun-Li player, but man, she looks great in this costume. In the month of March 2018, we had three Monster Hunter crossover costumes Esther battles available, which was for Ibuki, Armika, and Ken. The Monster Hunter background music is also available to unlock. Along with the Monster Hunter costumes, there was also Nash crossover costume, Captain Commando. He will fight you in the City of Chaos. In the month of April, we got dibs on the Capcom Pro Tour 2018 DLC bundle. For the launch of the bundle, we have Akuma and Sakura exclusive costumes, extra 5,000 fight money, exclusive missions for more fight money, all characters will have an exclusive color which is gold and black, and a few titles. There's more stuff I will go over later, but as far as April is concerned, that's all for the CPT 2018 bundle. Gao has an extra battle costume based off the unknown soldier from Forgotten World. It's also known as Lost Worlds in Japan. In the month of May, Bison was announced to have a crossover costume. This is Astaroth from Ghosts and Goblins. June has been very interesting as well. There's lots of stuff to mention. For extra battle costumes, Ryu will have Arthur's costume from Ghosts and Goblins. You can also do a battle to unlock the background music to the game. The new Catcom Pro Tour stage is also available, and this stage looks amazing. Every year, each stage outdoes the next one. I love it. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that Birdie gets an exclusive Champion's Choice costume for the bundle as well. Another thing I mentioned in June was the Devil May Cry costumes. You got Ken rocking Dante's outfit, Ed is wearing Nero's costume, but as far as Astro Battle is concerned, we got Laura wearing Gloria's costume, which is really trish. This is basically a great treat for DMC fans. The Gloria costume is the only one that's an Astro Battle costume from the DMC trio. The last thing I mentioned in the month of June is that there's a new feature called Fighting Chance in the Shop. This is kind of like a loot box feature. You can unlock colors, art, new costumes for characters. Kami's Cannon Spike costume is the first to gamble in Manat's shop. And some rewards could actually benefit you in survival mode. It's very similar to the supplements you receive in the end of each match, but it will cost you no score points. Speaking of survival mode, you can now save your progress and pick up where you left off at. If you lose a match, you can retry where you left off, but this will cost you fight money. Now there's more costumes to mention like Cammy's Hunting Ground costume and Balrog's Mike Bison costume, but I just want to go over the materials from the launch all throughout the last announced character. If I go over every costume, I'll never get this review done. I should also mention that in late September, we got a free stage which is the dojo. This is basically your own customized stage. With that being said, I do love the Capcom crossover costumes. All of them. I do have videos on them if you want to see gameplay on them. Overall for me, Season 3 has been mostly a positive experience. I love the new golden layout. The Season 3 roster has been pretty enjoyable. Character stories were here and there. Sakura's stories develop her character, but it still shows that her relationship with Ryu is still one-sided. Blanca story is pretty much to promote the Blanca Chan plushies. Fox story established the beginning of the Neo Shadowloo group with Ed. Cody's story was nothing special in my opinion. I vaguely remember it. The only thing I remember was his encounter with Abigail, a recycled art piece of Zeku from his story, and Cody's assistant, Marlo. However, I do love his evolution in this character, like I mentioned earlier. G's story made Rashia and Manat look like a joke. And if G is cute, that's very debatable. It's still a fun theory to throw around with G. 
especially since Q is still a mysterious character. Capcom did something interesting with Sagat's story. A full circle development with his character, the possibility of Sagat being possessed by the Satsu no Hado. What better way for Sagat to understand his rival Ryu than go through the same thing he went through? It's an interesting idea and hopefully Capcom doesn't let the idea linger. The extra battle mode is quite the experience. Playing online has definitely been better. We do have these moments online here and there, but the online does work. Heck, even when the server is offline during the maintenance, it feels like it went by fast. The only negative thing I could say about Season 3 is that it sucks that the original fight money rewards has been reduced. Let's just say you do get a good amount of fight money, you'll end up spending it on fighting chance or extra battle mode. You at least have a high chance of getting your rewards for costumes, but fighting chance could be a pain to get a certain color or costume. The RNG in fighting chance is so weird. With that being said, I think this is the reason Capcom didn't bother giving us more stages. Because saving fight money is almost a joke due to weekly content. I am glad that we at least got a free stage which is the dojo. That could be a way to accommodate for all the fight money we spent on Nestor Battles and Fighting Chance Gambles. In my opinion, you're better off just buying the stages or characters with real money. Especially if Manat is taking your fight money and Fighting Chance. But to be fair, you could get fight money back by playing survival mode. Catcom made it easier to beat survival mode with helpful items you can unlock. Not to mention, you could get a save feature. However, if you lose and still want to continue, it will cost you fight money. Having arcade is also a great feature to have in Street Fighter V. It feels very rewarding unlocking story art endings for each character in the respective timeline for each game. I also like the bonus art you unlock when certain conditions are met. Honestly, it should have been something included since the vanilla version of the game, but better late than never I guess. Some characters are questionable on why they're in certain arcade modes. In my opinion, you have to really stretch and reach on why certain characters are there. Like Abigail and Zeku are in Street Fighter 1 arcade mode. Also, some of the challengers are questionable. I noticed G is a challenger in Street Fighter 5 arcade. Similar to how Shinokuma challenges you in Street Fighter 2 Arcade. Maybe it's a reference to Q being a street fight you encounter in Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. I don't know. The second V triggers added to all the characters are a great tool to use in combat. I'll even say that most of the second V triggers are better than the first. Alright guys, I think I made this video way too long. I really enjoy Street Fighter 5 Arcade Edition for the most part. I hope you guys enjoyed the overview of what I presented on this video. If you guys haven't, make sure to check me out on Twitch. I stream there constantly. And it means a lot if you like, comment, and subscribe on this channel. Other than that, I do look forward to Season 4, Street Fighter 5, and so on. And that's pretty much it. I am out, guys. Peace.